us, God, for we are praying. Hear us, God, for we are laughing in our joy. Hear us, God, for we are crying out to you, wondering what will be, what will be. Speak to us, God, for we are listening. Speak to us, God, for we are waiting for your voice. Speak to us, God, in our hearts and all around. Tell us what can be, what can be. It is Palm Sunday. It is a day of celebration in the life of the church, and I'm glad you're here with us. As we join for digital worship, know that whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As we celebrate today, as we prepare for Easter next week, I'm grateful you're a part of our digital community. And let us worship God together. Right on, King Jesus. No man can I hinder me. Right on, King Jesus. Right on, no Let us pray. Come, come, O Holy One. Come through the streets. Come into the house. Come to find a space beside us at the table. Come to challenge our answers about why tragedy comes, why poverty increases, why we are afraid. Come, O Holy One. Speak to us in the silence with wisdom greater than ours, with love deeper than ours, with change wider than ours. Amen.
The reading today comes from Matthew 21, 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and the colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey, the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. Very large crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches of trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. Holy God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Let your word now dwell within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. Matthew's Gospel of Jesus Christ gives us some interesting scenes based on a literal reading of the old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. It's worth noting that in the days of Jesus, the only Scriptures available were what we call the Old Testament. The Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the prophets, the wisdom writings, the Psalms. These were the Scriptures of Jesus' day. These were the Scriptures Matthew read, and Matthew probably read them in Greek, not in Hebrew for that is what most of the world spoke in that area, and that's how the, uh, the scriptures were understood by many. A literal reading of the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures means that when Matthew quotes from Zechariah, Matthew offers us a reading that doesn't take it as poetry, but uses a literalism that almost becomes funny. Zechariah's writing says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Several things to note about this passage that is alluded to in Matthew, and would have been familiar to many of Matthew's first readers and hearers. The first is the image of God giving a king... Not who rides in on a war horse, but who rides on a donkey. Not one surrounded by battle bow and chariot. One who is humble. The second is a little more convoluted. It takes a little understanding of Hebrew poetry. Hebrew poetry isn't about a rhyme, the way English poetry is, and it's not even about a meter. It's not about how many beats per line. It's not musical the way Western music is. 
Instead, it's often done in couplets. And these couplets can match each other, or they can refute each other, or they can be inverses of each other. And these two lines that go together here in Zechariah are very much like some we find in the Psalms and the Prophets. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious as he, and here's the couplet, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In Hebrew poetry, these two lines are describing one thing, not two different things. To say a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey, is merely to add emphasis to what the animal is, not a donkey and its colt. Similar examples help show what's going on. In the Psalms, we read, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that thou dost care for him? These aren't two different people that it's talking about. It's talking about human beings, man as in human, mortal. What is a mortal that you are mindful of him? What is a human that you care for him? Another example is, The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? It's a repetition that adds emphasis. There are not two lords in that passage. Or in Isaiah, then their offspring will, excuse me, then their offspring will be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. It's a repetition, their offspring among the nations, their descendants among the peoples. It's one group of people. We don't know why Matthew uses a literal reading of this and makes it two separate animals the donkey and the colt, the foal of a donkey. It's one of those things I would love to ask. It's one of those mysteries in the writing of the Gospels that would be fascinating to discover the what, what lies behind it. But that's not a question we get to ask. It's one of those great unknowns. I take it, and maybe this is one way to take it as a warning, a warning against a literalism that becomes reductionistic. When we take logic to an illogical conclusion. Otherwise, Jesus is here surfing on a donkey and a colt. It says, put your cloaks over both of them and I will ride them. Is one the seat and one the footstool? Is Jesus? Does Jesus have a a foot on each one, it makes no sense. And such an image is shocking to us. Perhaps as shocking as this whole parade was to the powers that be in Jesus' day. Palm Sunday celebrates the entrance into Jerusalem, the entrance of Jesus as a mockery of Rome. This is a satire, a parody of a, an imperial triumph, when a general or a Caesar or some leader is brought in on the back of a chariot, brought in with a parade with flower petals being tossed and with music and with all sorts of ways of praising them. There was so much praise that there had to be someone else on the chariot with the one being praised, whispering, remember thou art mortal, remember thou art mortal. Jesus is throwing shade. Jesus is riding in, humble, as a way of upstaging all of those who believe that reality hinges upon the chariot and the war horse and the battle bow. This is the mission of a God who will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations, as the prophet Zechariah says. This is a parade of the Prince of Peace, not an imperial military parade. 
This is the parade of people who've had enough of gun violence, especially in schools with the slaughter of children and teachers, and they cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. For Hosanna means, save us. Aren't our children and our teachers crying, save us? And aren't we as a society doing nothing? This is the march of the people who stand up the people who stand up against those who wish to erase transgender people LGBTQIA+ plus people people who are immigrants. This is the march of people who stand up against those who wish to outlaw people who look different, who speak differently, who pray differently, who worship differently who gender differently. Hosanna! Save us. This is the gathering of people for whom the system is not the American dream, but the American nightmare. Hosanna! Save us. This is the parade that calls out the powers that be and shows them all they are not doing. And there's a figure in the story I want us to consider. Someone in the story who's never named, who never gets any limelight, never gets talked about much, without whom there wouldn't be a parade. Without whom there wouldn't be a Palm Sunday. Without whom there wouldn't be this entrance into Jerusalem. Who owns the donkey? Who does the colt, the foal of a donkey, belong to? Who is it that answered the call that the Lord needs them? Who is it that said yes to this strange new possibility of God breaking in? Jesus says, go to the village and find a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey, and bring them. And if anybody asks, say, the Lord needs them. And they'll send them. And that's what they do. My question is, who owns them? Who offers them? Who gives them so freely? And who are we? What is it we have that the Lord needs? Is it our music? Do you have musical skills? Do you have a love for music? And sharing that would help us praise the Lord? Is it your art? Is it your artistic eye? Is it your quilting? Is it the ability to speak out on issues of justice and to write legislators and to show up in solidarity with those in need? What of ours is God calling us to use for the Hosannas, save us, of today? Is it our hospitality? Our ability to use Instagram? Our enthusiasm? Our ability to coordinate things? Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. When it comes time and the Lord needs it, what shall we offer to make possible the work of grace and the day of resurrection? Will we hold back? Or will we say, thanks be to God? Amen.
Spirit so near As it was from the start So it shall be forever One God always here Glory to the Creator And the Christ and the Spirit so it was from the start, so it shall be forever. One God always Let us pray. On this Palm Sunday we gather. We gather with hosannas on our lips. Lord, we gather with cries of praise, but also cries of save us. For there is violence in our world on scales we've never seen before. We have hidden from the wars going on happening across the globe from us. But there's also violence of turning people away, turning them away from states, from medical care, from full participation in the life of being human. It's couched in words that pretend to protect children. It's shown in ways that pretend that we are all in this together against these various evils. And yet it paints people as evil. People who are just trying to live their lives. Lord, let our shouts of Hosanna rise to you. Be with us in all those needs that we have as individuals, as families, as church, as communities, as a society. Break the war bow. Cut off the chariot. Stop the war horse. Gracious God, come with your peace. A peace that lets every person be fully alive and no one harms on your sacred mountain. Come with your resurrection power, Lord. We pray this facing a week when we will know, we will know betrayal, we will know arrest, we will know 
death at the hands of the state. For this is the story of Holy Week. Come with resurrection power. Be with us in our needs. Help us to be the people helping others. All this we pray along with those prayers we have yet to find words for, and these we lift up. Praying in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught using the words on the screen or those closest to our hearts. The prayer that begins, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to experience holiness in simplicity. In the simplicity of bread, the simplicity of cup. We come and we remember. We remember that Jesus gathered with the multitudes on the hillsides and fed them, warning his disciples not to be like the leaven of the Pharisees or of Herod, but to feed people, to feed them because they are hungry. And he gathered with his people in that upper room, in the Cataluma, that place above the house, where they took time to remember the Passover. They took time to give thanks to God for all God had done in the life of the people and in their lives. And in that room, they remembered Lord is 
Like Jesus and his people in the upper room, we remember. We remember God's acts in our lives and God's acts in the life of the church. And we remember how Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God for it, and broke it. Then when Jesus gave it to them, he said, This is my body given for you. When you eat it, remember me. The same way, after the supper, he took the cup, he poured it, he gave thanks to God for it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin for you and for many. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Gracious God, be present with us in this bread, in this cup. Let your presence be known to us, that your life would be in us and our life would be in you, that we would be your people, a people of Hosanna, people willing to do what is necessary to be a part of your salvation for those around us. Be present with us and do not depart, even as we go from this place, that your Spirit would guide us and protect us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and eat. Amen. The cup of salvation is poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for hosting us again at your table, wherever it is. For being a part of our lives in the simple ways. And in the ways that move us beyond ourselves. Bless us to go forth from this time and this place rejoicing that the connection we have with you, with one another, with the whole of church, and with all of creation, with all our world of neighbors, would be a source of love and joy, compassion and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And I invite you to celebrate the resurrection with us here in worship, whether digitally or at the church. On Maundy Thursday, we will have a service at the church, a tenebrae service. We will remember when Jesus gave us the, the sacrament of communion. And we will remember the shadows that followed. On Good Friday, the church will be open from noon until 3 for prayer, for a time of meditation, reflection, with stations of the cross, with self-guided 
opportunities there. Holy Saturday. From 6 p.m. until 10 p.m., the church will be open for prayer. You can sign up, call the church, let us know what time slot you want. There are 30-minute slots or an hour if you want. Prayer will be happening. The church will be prayer-filled. Sunday morning, 6.15, we will gather at Cedar Beach. We will have our sunrise service. Sunrise should be around 6.23, I think it said. We will gather with song and celebration, with story and prayer. And at 10 a.m., our Easter service of the resurrection in the sanctuary, also here available online. We're trying to move towards live streaming, so it won't be pre-recorded, but actually offering the worship in the church on Sunday morning. So we're, we're doing our best with it, but there will be glitches. We just don't know what they'll be yet. So please, we ask you to be patient with us as we sort this out as we move forward. Also coming up, the 16th will be my final Sunday with the church. I am grateful for you joining us digitally during my time here, that the, the pandemic has moved us to new ministries, to new ways of doing things, allowing us to offer this worship service to you wherever you are. And we will have digital church going forward. We're just not sure exactly how it'll happen. As I said, we're moving towards live streaming. So please be patient. They will get it up and running. Also, we will start having Saturdays at Mount Sinai Church. And this will be opportunities to gather for some wonderful things like concerts, uh, nature walks, uh, historical walks through the cemetery. We have Seaview Cemetery next to the church. These and other activities will be coming up, and we invite you to join us as you're able. This should be a lot of fun. So, my friends, take care of yourself and know that you are loved. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord's countenance be lifted up upon you. The Lord's peace be yours. Amen and amen. Go in peace.